y'all and welcome to episode 77 of the Crazy Sock Lady podcast. My name is Kay and this is my YouTube channel where I chat about all of my knitting and crafty adventures. Today is Monday, October 28th. I'm not used to recording on a Monday so I almost said Thursday. That's my normal recording day but it's been so long since I've chatted with you guys and I had some finished objects and some works in progress to share so I thought I would go ahead and hop on here and do a somewhat of a quick little episode today to get you guys caught up on everything that I have been working on. Um, so first up, let me let you know where you can find me. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as The Crazy Sock Lady. And there is a Ravelry group for this podcast. You can just search for Crazy Sock Lady podcast on Ravelry under the groups tab and it should pop right up. We've got a couple of swap of swaps going on over there right now. I'll make sure to link those down below. There's one with Organized Chaos and one with Bridgefield Fiberworks. So what the swapless swaps are, are you get 10 40 yard minis and the prices range from $35 to $45, including shipping. It just depends on where it is shipping to. And the minis are fingering weight. So that's kind of what's going on in the Ravelry group right now. We don't have any excuse me, I can't talk today. We don't have any knit-alongs going on at the moment. And I'm going to keep it that way for just a little bit longer until I really feel super inspired to do something. We shall see what comes up. But links to everywhere that you can find me as well as show notes will be right down below this video here on YouTube. And I think that's all of the beginning administrative stuff. So design talk. I don't have any designs to show you today, but I do have one that is coming out November 1st. I'm keeping it a secret for just a bit longer until people receive their box. It is a pattern that I designed for Amber of Maker's Haven for her In Light of Luna book and yarn box. Those boxes are sold out, um, but you can get the book in light of Luna on Amazon or on Amber's website, Makers Haven, which I'll link below. I'm not sure if she's gonna have any of the yarn listed to purchase by itself afterwards, but I do believe she said she's gonna list some more book and yarn boxes. I think she said she'd have a couple. So I will put her website down below and you can keep an eye out over on her space if you're interested in getting any of that yarn. Um, she has gorgeous yarn, so anything that she puts on there I highly recommend. I love Amber and I love her yarn. But that pattern will be coming out November 1st. So keep an eye on my Instagram. That's where I will share it first. And then you can purchase that. And you don't have to have gotten the book and yarn box to participate in Amber's make along that she's going to have. You can knit, crochet, do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be my pattern. You don't have had to have gotten the box. You can still participate. So yes, that pattern will come November 1st and I'm so excited about it. It's something that I've never done before. I've never designed with this before. So I've been very excited and anxious about this pattern going out into the world. I love it so much, but I'm nervous. <laughs> so I hope that you guys enjoy it. Um, definitely watch November 1st on Instagram for the announcement of when it is up. I actually, I have a page on Ravelry for it now, I'll link it below, but there are no photos or information yet because I still want to keep that a secret until everybody that purchased the book and yarn box has received theirs. Um, so I asked Amber what date she would recommend and she said November 1st should be good. Everyone should have their boxes by then. So this Friday I think is November 1st, so not too much longer. Okay, I'm looking over here at all of the things. I've got three finished objects and three works in progress. That's funny. It kind of worked out evenly there. I have three other works in progress that are designs right now, but I didn't bring them in here to show you guys yet, but I'm going to need testers for them. So I always have people ask, how can I get information on test knitting for you? The way that I do it is I open up a Google form to be filled out when I need testers. And I will announce that on my Instagram stories. So keep an eye out there. That's just been working really, really well for me. 
I keep it open for a certain amount of time and the form can be filled out and then I will go through the responses and choose. I normally get about 10 test knitters. So that's been working really well and I'm going to keep with that. But I do have three patterns in progress and I will probably be looking for testers for all three of them. I want to have testers by November 15th. So keep an eye out the first week or two of November for those. Okay, let's go to finished objects. <laughs> the first one, let's see, I don't think I shared this last time. I don't think I did. I don't know if they were finished by the last time, but I saw them in here when I went to grab my other finished object. And I thought I'm going to go ahead and show them because I don't remember if I did or not. So I finished my sock blank socks. And this was out of a sock blank that I knit with um, Melissa of Honeybee Knits one of her sock blanks and these were super fun to do and that yellow is very bright that's why it's getting a little bit blown out it's very fun and bright so these I didn't I don't care that they don't match I think it's super cute I started sort of with the yellow right yes with the yellow and went down and then to the pink and then I just continued the pink and it kind of went to a darker purple and then a lighter purple over here. For these, I worked them up on a US 1 2.25 millimeter needles, 64 stitches. And I did a slip stitch heel flap, rounded toe. The instructions for the heel flap and the toe are the ones that are in my patterns that you can find on Ravelry or Etsy. So yeah, these were a lot of fun to do. I love sock blanks. The fabric does, let's see if I can get a good picture of the fabric. Let's see if I can darken that up a bit so it's not as blown out. Yeah, you can see it's not like a super smooth fabric. The ribbing definitely always looks a little crazy, but these have not been blocked. So if these were to be blocked, it definitely would smooth that fabric out just a bit. I am just now remembering, I haven't shared with you guys on the podcast, I don't think, I know I shared it on Instagram, but I don't think I've shared here that I designed a pattern for Signature Needle Arts and that pattern, I don't have it here, I sent the sock to them so that they would have the sample with them, but it's called The Secret Garden and it is a sock pattern um, with some super fun and pretty cables that go up the front. And they have that listed on their website. So I'm going to link that down below. It's available through Signature Needle Arts just for right now. It's the only place that you can get it in a kit with the yarn that I used, which was, I'll put some pictures in here. It was um, Malabrigo in the Diana colorway. If I'm incorrect about that, I will put it down there. But I'm pretty sure it's the Diana colorway. So I can't believe I forgot to mention that. Um, but yes, that can be purchased over there in the kit with the yarn. Next finished object are the socks that I knit for Eric. So I did these out of Knit Picks Felici in the steamer trunk colorway. And I did 64 stitches for him on a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle. And for these, I did an afterthought heel. And I used the Kirby Warby tutorial on YouTube for a true afterthought heel. That's how I always do mine. And I was glad to have these done. I finished these. I was determined to get them done before I left to go to Rhinebeck, New York for the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. I was figuring out what I was going to take and I wanted to take new sock cast-ons, but I did not want to leave any sock projects unfinished back home. I just had it in my brain that I wanted sock projects done before I cast on new ones on the trip. So I finished these the night before I left. Got them done and I was very happy about that. So he can have them now. I, I'm like, they're done. He's like, well, thank you. I said, but you can't wear them yet. You have to wait until I get back and record an episode of the podcast. So he's been patiently waiting. The last finished object that I have is my cable stayed cardigan. It is done. I got this done and blocked and wore it Saturday at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And it was chilly that day, so it was perfect. It did get a little hot in the sun in the afternoon. 
Um, but yeah, this was perfect. So this is the Cable Stayed Cardigan, and I believe the designer's name is Yulina Murich. There will be a link down below to the project page um, that will have the pattern and designer listed. I'll go ahead and try it on for you guys. So one thing I will say, I knit this out of Miss Babs Yalza, which I love, but a couple of things. I did get gauge with it. I should have done a smaller size than what I went with. Looking back now, I wish I would have. And Miss Babs Yowza grows so much. And I should have known that because my memories cardigan is a little bit big as well. And it's out of Yowza because it grew. And yeah, lesson learned now. It took me two sweaters to learn that lesson size down. And I'm not saying everybody should do that, but I'm just saying me, the way I knit, the experiences I've had, I will size down because I do too big of a size anyways. I always do. Um, for this one, I knit the 41 inch bust. I'm a 37, 38, 36, depending on that time of the month. Um, I knit too big of a size. So I'm going to show you guys. And it's not too big. I definitely just would have liked the fit better had it been a smaller size. So I feel like I have way too much extra fabric. Like that's, that's all extra. I don't need all of that right there. So I feel like right here I just have too much fabric. But it's a gorgeous sweater. It's just a bit oversized now, not too much, but like I said, just the fit that I wanted, I needed to go down a size. This is, to me is, it bothers me. There's just so much extra fabric right in that section. Now, if I do pull the sweater up and overlap it, it's not quite as bad. There's still some extra, but that's not how it's supposed to be worn. It's supposed to be worn open like that. So what I did with this sweater, I blocked it the normal way that I block something that I knit. I soaked it for about 15, 20 minutes and then laid it out flat to dry. And I tried to be extremely careful that I did not let it grow too much. I tried to keep it, you know, contained, <laughs> but there was still too much. Um, it was still, I just was not happy with this right here. I'm just, I'm still not super pleased with it. I don't know. I'm just not happy with that part right there. And so what I did, I followed my friend Karen's instructions on how she reblocked her Miss Babs sweater. The Miss Babs Yowza is a super wash and super wash can be put in the dryer. So if you do this, do it with extreme caution, but this is what I did to shrink it back up. Cause this is even smaller than it was after I blocked it the traditional way. So it was it was even bigger, but I soaked it just like normal. And then I kind of pressed very gently to get some of the water out. And then I put it in a mesh, like a delicate laundry bag that zips up. And I put it in my washing machine on the spin cycle to spin that extra water out. And then I put it in the dryer on the delicate cycle. No heat. Or I think it was low heat. Whatever the knit delicate cycle is. Um, for 10 minutes. Took it out, checked it. 10 minutes more. Took it out, checked it. Did that until I was satisfied with how it turned out. It was definitely prettier. Blocked the traditional way as far as kind of how the bottom laid and just, I just thought it was much prettier that way. But this helped with the size issue a lot. So I'm happy with it. I will still wear it. I just wish I would have went down at least one size. I probably could have went down two sizes and then when I blocked it, it probably would have fit perfectly. So lesson learned, I'm going to be very, 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 
conscious going forward about the sizes that I choose because I just keep knitting them in sizes that are too big for me. Because this, like I said, this is a 41 inch and it definitely grew, I think, to more than a 41 inch when it was blocked. But even if it had stayed 41, it would have been too big. So this is an error I keep making on sweaters. One day I will learn that lesson <laughs> and I will have a sweater that fits perfect. I don't know, but I'm, I'm pleased with it and I love the detail down the side here with these cables, how they run throughout. I think it's so pretty. So that was my Rhinebeck sweater. And like I said, it was perfect. Now if the weather would just cool down here in Arizona a little bit more so that I can wear it here. It has cooled down some. We sat out by um, the fire pit last night and that was nice. Had a little fire going and listened to some music. So that was nice. The it is cooled down enough to make that enjoyable. <laughs> All right, that's it for works in, or no, finished objects. Now, works in progress. Like I said, I have three. The first one, I've got some Halloween and fall bags out and in rotation since Halloween is Thursday. So this is one that my friend Pam and my knit group made. Actually, both of the sock projects are in Pam bags. <laughs> she doesn't have a shop or anything. She just has made some for our knit group. So this one, I love this Halloween bag. And in here I have some vanilla socks. The yarn is Hypnotic Yarn. And the colorway is Leaf Peeping. And what yarn base is this on? This is on her 80-20. 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. Gorgeous fall colorway. So I cast this on, I think I cast it on Friday morning before we left the house. Maybe Thursday evening, I can't remember which one, but I wanted something just plain vanilla to knit on while we were out and about throughout the weekend. So this is what I started. And I've gotten some work done on it since we've been home. So that's why it's a little bit bigger. I did not get very much done on this while we were there. I think I got the cuff done and a little bit past and that was about it. But here's where it is at now. And I've got the heel done. And the gusset decreases are finished. I have a cute little pumpkin progress keeper on there. I can't remember where I got that from. Might be an older one from Cat's Kettle, maybe. But I really love this yarn. I've had this yarn in my stash for two years at least, probably. It's gorgeous. Perfect for fall. It's definitely making me very happy to knit these up. So these right now are my out and about on the go sock knitting. I did some knitting on them at basketball games over the weekend, appointments last week, and then today they'll be used for appointments because the boys have a dentist appointment this afternoon to get their teeth cleaned. So that will mean some time to sit and knit for me. So that's those. And I'm actually, I didn't show you the needles, did I? So I'm doing those on US 1 2.25 millimeter needles. 64 stitches and I'm doing them on my signature sock needles. I love these. Love, love, love these needles. My other sock project is one that I cast on for the trip to New York as well. And this is a special colorway. I actually have one done. So I'm going to take one of Eric's socks off the blocker and put it on here. So this is my October Desert Vista Dye Work socks. And the colorway I'm using is one that Susan dyed for everyone who stayed in our house up in New York. And it is called A Color for Each of Us. So she did everybody's favorite color as a stripe. 
So this one right here is mine. It's what the toe is in. So this raspberry color. And I did my heel toe do -si do sock pattern for this. Slip stitch, heel flap, and gusset. And then she gave us a mini. Um, that was our, our collar as a mini. And I for totally spaced and forgot to use it for the cuff. I forgot to use it for the heel. So I've only got it in the toe. <laughs> like man how did I forget I think my brain was just in so many different places that I just totally forgot so I've just got a raspberry toe and that's it but let me show you the front of the sock here so you can see the pattern a little better I do still have all of my markers marking every 10th row on the one side but there's the heel toe do -si do sock pattern Super fun for self striping. And again, US1 2.25 millimeter needles. That's just my go to. I've got the second one started. And this has got to take a priority here because what is it? The 28th, right? Yeah, it's the 28th. I've got to get these done by the end of the month. So that's all I've gotten done on the second sock so far. There's the yarn and just stocking it. And again, I've got my signature sock needles. And there's the little mini. That's the raspberry color. You can see it a little better. And these have been fun. I have not worked on tweed yarn very much, so these have been different and fun to work on. All right, my last work in progress is my Oracle shawl. And I'm housing it in my big fringe supply co, what are these called town bag, right? It's massive and it holds so much. And I've just been sticking all of my other project bags <laughs> down in here to take them all places when I go somewhere to get some knitting done. So that's been nice. Everything can just be held down in one bag. But I've been trying to make it a mission to get this Oracle shawl done. So I talked on, it might have been the last episode, about trying to get all of my like languishing whips and just, you know, any whips that I start between now and the end of the year done other than designs and off of my needles and start fresh in the new year with clean needles. So I've been trying to do, and this is really my only languishing whip other than scrappy projects, <laughs> which those I'm just not counting because they're so ongoing and they take so long. So this is the main focus as far as what do I wanna get off of my needles. This is a languishing whip and it's a larger whip. So I wanna have it done by the end of the year. I didn't have too much done on it. I was in this brioche section and I decided to take this to be my airplane knitting because the flight was like four or five hours. It was a longer flight. Um, I think almost five or maybe even over five. And I was like, you know, I want something that will keep me engaged, keep me awake. I don't like sleeping on airplanes. So I thought that this would be perfect and it was. So on the first, on the flight there, I got through the brioche and into the lace. So that was nice, but then I made a mistake <laughs> on like the very, no, it was the second row of this section. I had made a mistake on the airplane. I'm guessing, I know when it happened, there was turbulence as we were landing and I'm doing yarn overs and the, the shawl's going like this in the turbulence and I think a yarn over popped off. <laughs> Whoops. So I had to tink back because I thought, oh, I can just, I can, I can make it work. You know, I'll just increase here and that'll, that'll work. It did not work. So I had to tink back, but I got it going. And then on the way home, this is what I worked on. So I just love the lace in this. And I love this yarn and this pattern. Like I said, it's the Oracle shawl. I don't think I said who it's by. It's by Kristen of Vullenvine Yarns. It's gorgeous. She does have, this is the full Oracle. 
a full pie shawl. She does have the half, it's called half moon oracle. If you don't want to do a full circle, she has like the half. But I, from the moment she released this, I have wanted to do this. And I got the yarn at Indie Untangled in, when would that have been? 2017? I think that's right. It's from Kristen's. She had a booth that year. So I got the yarn from her there. And let's see if I can remember what all of the colorways are. So I think that this is Grim. I'm pretty sure this is Coven. And this is Paranormal, I think. She had these in a kit there. This was the colorways that I'm pretty sure these are the ones she did hers out of. So these are the ones I was hunting for and I found them. So I'm not sure how many sections I have left. Quite a bit, I think, because it's not too, too big, but it is scrunched up on 40 inch cables. So, and I'm working this on my Knitter's Pride Zings. been a lot of fun. I do have, I put it stitch markers to help me keep track of the lace so that I can double check and make sure I have the right amount of stitches. And I put these stitch markers in after I made the mistake and had to tink back. Then when I restarted that section, I put the stitch markers in so that I could count easily and see if I had the right amount of stitches in between the markers for the lace repeat. The only ones I had were this light bulb, but they work just fine. I didn't have enough of the just like circle stitch markers, but those work. So this has been my evening knitting. I've been, really been trying to focus and make that evening knitting so that if I'm just sitting and watching TV, I get that out and just do a little bit on it at least. Some nights I'm too tired to do too much, but I try to do even just a little bit on it and hopefully it'll be done by the end of the year. Now I'm gonna share something that I got in the mail with you guys. So I recently discovered a shop called The Steady Hand. There's their business card. And when I saw these on the website, I knew I had to have one. First off, the fabric I think is gorgeous. There are other fabric options. This cute little zipper pouch. Let me open it up so you can see what it holds on the inside. All of your progress keepers. How cute is that? So I struggle with keeping track of these. I'm so bad at it. I tried a little thing to hang on the wall and I never remember to put them back in there. More often than not, they end up in Notions pouches, project bags, which is fine. You know, then when you use that bag or that Notions pouch, you can grab it out. But when that happens and I'm not using the project bag or the Notions pouch for a while, I forget what markers I have. And then I also have a little dish, um, it's probably about that big, sitting by the chair that I sit and knit in most of the time. And it's full of progress keepers and stitch markers. So they'll just get put in there when they get taken off of a project. And I just struggle with keeping them all in one place. I want them all in one place so that I know when I open it up, I can really be choosing from my full selection to get what I want. <laughs> To me, that just, this is making me so happy having them all in one place. So anyways, it's got some, I don't know that I'd really call it string, cord. I don't know what you would call this that is running across here in these three sections. And then they're split up into smaller sections. And I really like that because then, like over here, I've just got two hung right here. But... These cute little kitties I purchased um, at Rhinebeck this year from We One's Creations, and I can hang the whole set of them right there. I just think that's genius. So if you have a set of them, you can hang them all together in that little sectioned off area. 
And then I've got just some other ones hanging down here. I just think this is so nice to keep everything in one area. And then the zipper does have a little thing on it. So you could clip this inside of a tote bag or something to keep it all together. But this is now going to go on my end table by my, um, whoa, that got bright. <laughs> by my knitting chair. I have a little basket thing there that I keep different notions and things in. So this will now be going in there so that when I'm sitting out there and I want a progress keeper, one of my pretty ones, I can just open it up and they'll all be right there for me to choose from. And I think I have a couple more that are floating around in project bags. So as I find those, I will stick them in here, but this is just making me so happy right now. So I'm going to link their shop down below. If any of you would benefit from keeping all of your things in one space, that type of thing just makes me so happy. And when I have just a cute little thing like this to put them in, it's just even better. So I wanted to share that with you guys. I received that since the last time I recorded. And of course I did buy some things at all of the Rhinebeck festivities. So we went to basically everything almost. I mean, I'm sure there were other things that we did not make it to, but we went to Needles Up, which is hands down always my favorite because Chelsea and Sue were just the sweetest, most genuine people you will ever meet in your entire life. And it was nice to see Sandy up by the lakeside. She vended there this year as well. So it was really great to see her and give her a hug. And where else did we go? We went to the one that Christy Glass did. Was that the Rhinebeck Yarn Bazaar, I think was the name of that one. So we went to that and we went to Indian Tangled. And then Saturday and Sunday, we did the actual New York Sheep and Wool Festival at the fairgrounds. This is, it was my third year going. My absolute favorite of all three trips for sure. This one was the most relaxed trip. There was no pressure about having to do here or be there or do here, do this or be there or anything. You know, we had events we wanted to go to, but it was just a, a very relaxed flow of going from place to place. It was just a really great trip. I of course bought some things at all of the events. I'm not going to do a huge show of my haul though. I'm just going to show you guys as I work on it on the things because I am on a mission starting January 1st of 2020. I'm knitting from this stash. I'm going this this past year I've done really well about cutting back on the yarn that I bought much better than previous years. And I, so I did buy some things at Rhinebeck, but other than that, I've done fairly well at being more selective about what I buy and not just feeling like I have to buy everything. I've been very selective about purchases that I've made. So I did, wasn't buying as much this past year. Going into 2020, I'm going to cut that back even more and be super selective about what I purchase. Because guys, I bought all of this with a purpose. I bought it because I love it. I bought it because a lot of them, I bought them for a specific pattern other than a lot of the socks gains, but I want to knit those things. Why am I not knitting those things? I really believe that buying yarn and knitting the yarn are just like two completely different hobbies. <laughs> and 2020, I'm gonna be focusing on knitting the yarn. So I don't know if anyone else would be interested in something like that as a knit along. I don't really know how we would do it. Um, let me know thoughts below if you have any on a knit along with that type of thing where we just kind of could support each other in knitting through our stash. And come in here and I look at all of that behind me and it I love all of it. And every time I go through it and I look at the things, I fall even more in love with them again. And I remember why I bought them and I want to knit with them. So that's going to be 2020. I'm of course going to have designs going on. I'm still planning on designing anyways. Um, God willing, I'll still be doing that. But I really want to focus on 
knitting through some of this yarn. I was gonna say all of it, but that will take longer than a year. <laughs> but I really want to try my hardest to get through what I feel like would be a good bit of it and make a noticeable dent in it. So that's kind of my goal for 2020. I don't know if anyone else would be interested in that because like I said, it's two different hobbies, buying the yarn, using the yarn. I really feel like they're two different, but I really want to try to focus on using the yarn that I have because I just feel like it could be never ending to just keep buying the yarn and collecting it and never knitting it. So I really want to flip that around and really, really focus on knitting the yarn that I have. And I'm putting it out there so that maybe someone will hold me accountable to it <laughs> if I start to slide back from that. But all right, I think that's pretty much it for today. I think I've talked about everything I wanted to talk about. We've just had trying to get back into real life after a trip like the Rhinebeck trip is hard. It takes a couple of days. I feel like I struggled all week. I had just a really long week last week and it wasn't even all of that there was just life stuff going on it was just a long kind of hard week and so I'm I'm getting back into routine this week hopefully I've got a lot of work to get done stuff around the house and Halloween is on Thursday which is exciting the kids are going to go trick-or-treating we're going to sit out front and pass out candy and have the fire pit out there. So it should be a lot of fun. We've got um, some friends coming over to bring their kids to trick or treat. So I think it'll be a really good, good evening. So make sure to keep an eye out November 1st. That is when my next pattern will be released for the, that one is, the name of the pattern is In Light of Luna. And you can go ahead and see the Ravelry page on Ravelry. Like I said, I'll link it below, but there's just no photos or info as far as the yarn or anything goes so that way it's kept a surprise until November 1st for don't want to ruin you know the book and yarn box that people got that wouldn't be very nice so keep an eye out November 1st photos will go up all of the info and you can purchase it then and it does actually say it's available for purchase now that's so that people as they get their yarn boxes can use their download code and go ahead and get the pattern downloaded and then November 1st is when the photos and all of the info on the pattern will go up so that everyone else can see see what that is. So I hope that you guys like that pattern. I'm really looking forward to hopefully seeing some people knit it up. That would that would be wonderful. <laughs> but I will check in with you guys soon. Hopefully it won't be too long before the next time I get a chance to record. But until then, happy knitting. Bye.